Welcome back to Japanese History for Everyone, where we're taking another deep dive into Japan's female leaders. Today, we're actually talking about three different women because their lives are so interconnected, it wouldn't make sense to talk about them separately. And this is the third, fourth, and fifth official empresses of Japan Empress Jito, Empress Genmei, and Empress Gensho. So, first up is Empress Jito. She's the daughter of Emperor Tenji, who you may remember from the last video. He's the guy who committed murder in front of his mother, avoided being the emperor for like a decade or two, and then finally ascended the throne. She was also the wife of her uncle, Emperor Tenmu, who was Emperor Tenji's brother, because apparently that kind of thing was okay at the time. She was more of a traditional regent, that is, she ascended the throne after Emperor Tenmu's death in 686 in order to ensure that her son would become the next emperor after him. Unfortunately, her son would die young, and though he would not become the emperor, his son would become Emperor Jito's new heir. Even so, Empress Jito was actually very active in the administration of the royal court. And when she did finally abdicate in 697 in favor of her grandson, Emperor Monmu, she continued to be active as a cloistered ruler and maintained a lot of the power that she had during her tenure. Another fun fact is that she was a poet, and many of her poems can be found in the Manyoshi, an ancient collection of Japanese poems. One of the interesting facts about Emperor Monmu is that he was preceded by an empress and succeeded by not one but two empresses. And here's what happened. Emperor Monmu is a grandson of Empress Jito through her father who was Empress Jito's son. But his mother was like his grandmother, a daughter of Emperor Tenji. Yes, this means that his mother was also his cousin, but we can ignore that for now. Anyway, after Emperor Monmu dies, his son is too young to ascend the throne, so his mother ascends the throne instead, becoming Empress Genmei. Fun fact, it's actually during Empress Genmei's reign that the Kojiki is written and completed, which despite all of its fault, was a monumental task that took years to put together. Empress Genmei wasn't in power for very long, and in fact abdicated the throne, not in favor of her son, but in favor of her daughter, who becomes Empress Gensho. It's the one and only time in Japanese history that an empress was succeeded by another empress, which is in itself a pretty amazing fact. But the truth here is that Empress Genmei still had every intention of having her son, the intended heir of Emperor Monmu, ascend the throne when he came of age. He was just still too young at the time, only 14, and Empress Genmei was in her 50s and just ready to retire. So Empress Gensho succeeds the throne as regent for her younger brother. And fun fact again, it's during her reign that the Nihon Shoki is then completed. She abdicates in 724, and her brother becomes Emperor Shomu. She lives for 25 more years afterwards, but never marries or has any children of her own. So while these three empresses led as regents, you have to give them credit for ruling on behalf of the future Emperor Monmu and Emperor Shomu. Both Empress Jito and Empress Genmei held down the fort after their husband's death, and Empress Gensho stepped in to continue when her mother no longer could. They were able to be good examples of leadership to the future emperors and help keep the country stable when there weren't any male heirs to do so. I think that's still very much worthy of recognition. So that's it for today. Stay tuned for the next couple of videos. We will still be talking about female leaders of Japan. If you have any questions or comments, please comment down below. Also, be sure to subscribe hit the notification bell so you can get updated when the next video is out. Once again, thank you, and I'll see you in another two weeks.